Hello and welcome to NorCal Sports TV. I'm your host, Sonny Oaks. This is the San Jose City Classic tip-off. This is the third game of the day between the Feather River Golden Eagles and the San Mateo Bulldogs. You can hear the introductions in the background now, and I'll go over them myself. For the Feather River Golden Eagles, we have sophomore guard Jermaine Jordan, Jr. Another sophomore guard, number three, Justice Harvey. Freshman guard, number five, Colin Tarver. Sophomore guard, number 11, Terry Williams the third. Freshman forward, number 12, Ahmad Smith, Jr. Freshman forward, number 13, Marcus Connolly. Freshman forward, number 20, Marquise Wagner. Sophomore guard, number 24, Robert Lee the third. Freshman forward, 31, Wallace Belzer. And a freshman guard, 33, Kai Hostetter. Sophomore forward, 35, Fabian Cox. And freshman guard, number 41, Lane Barnett. The head coach is Kashawn Johnson. The assistants are Peyton Snaringer and Dan Smith. Now for the home team, the San Mateo Bulldogs. Sophomore guard, number two, Antonio Abeda. Sophomore guard, number three, Adrian Julian Johnson. Sophomore guard, number four, Justin Milch. Sophomore guard, number five, Shakur Blaylock. Sophomore guard, number 11, J.D. Carson. Freshman guard, number 12, Malik Merchant. Freshman forward, 14, Tim Natain. Sophomore guard, 15, Savion Campbell. Sophomore guard, 22, Sean Cotton. Freshman forward, 23, Keon Nice. Freshman guard, 24, Alex Martin. Freshman forward, 25, Jack Busenhart. Sophomore guard, 32, Davian Cox. Freshman guard, 34, Jason Montgomery. Freshman forward, 35, Deshaun Johnson. And freshman forward, 42, Tino Stemberga. You see a, an early shot attempt fall short. The head coach for the San Mateo Bulldogs is Mike Marcio. Assistants are Mike Barda and Rex Manu. The Bulldogs are in blue. And they come in, both of these teams are coming in to show off their stuff. This is a highly anticipated tournament season. And you usually see a few of these teams in contention for postseason. We've had two exciting games today. San Jose City took over the first game. And Merced won in a dove, double overtime thriller over the Lobos of Monterey Peninsula. All right, score remains at zero. Just about a minute gone in this first period. And we see our first bucket go through. And he's going to get two on the foul. The foul was on number five. Here you see the, here you see it. He comes in driving. Five standing there. Tries to take the charge. It's not going to count. Oh, he did get the, ch no. We're getting one and one here. Is it technical? Shooting all alone. So we had a technical there. Shooting for the Bulldogs. There's number two whose number is not listed on here. Oh, that would be Antonio Abeda. The foul was on Colin Tarver who has the ball now and is trying to drive. Takes it all the way inside, gets a foul on the attempt, and will go to the line to shoot two. So far, not too much offense shown, just a lot of hero ball. A little one-on-one, -on -one, just everybody clear out and watch me do something. First free throw doesn't fall for him. He'll line up for the second. Hopefully you guys tune in tomorrow for more of the same. We have three more exciting matchups coming here from the San Jose City tip-off. He converts one of them. It's 3-1. Feather River has the lead. Obeda trying to make something happen. Has to kick it out. That's Malik Merchant. Has to give it up. The shot by Savio Campbell doesn't fall. 
and Robert Lee III comes up with the rebound. Long cross-court pass. Not sure what the Feather River Golden Eagles are trying to do here. But Colin Tarver has the ball at the top of the key. Oh, and he gives it up. That shot clock almost ran out. There was a steal. What a behind-the-back play to save the fumble. And, no, oh, Savion Campbell comes back and gets the rebound on the miss. It was a three-on-one opportunity, and somehow the Golden Eagles coughed it up. But we're going to have a foul on the play. Here you see him going. Couldn't get, couldn't convert on what should have been an easy bucket. Good hustle on defense, though. A lot of pressure on defense, that full court press. Hopefully, hoping to turn turn the ball over a few times with that. Tarver pulls up. Not even close. Campbell with the rebound. Terry Williams, third, shoots it. Can't get it to fall. Malik Merchant bringing the ball up court. Jack Busenhart looking for some help. Antonio Beta gets the ball beyond the arc, but he steps out of bounds when he saw the pressure coming from the defense. Tarver on the defense. So Feather River is going to get the ball on the sideline. Here you see him pulling all the way across. You see his back foot. Oh, that was close. The ref must have seen it a little bit better. That was a little iffy. I, I probably, I don't know if. If he was a shoe size bigger, maybe he would have been out of bounds. We'll, we'll have to check that real closely. Oh, little defense there. We got a jump ball. Savion Campbell just reached right in there and wouldn't let go. So for the Rivers possession. 17.08 left on the clock. The score's only 3-1. Taking these outside shots when nothing's falling isn't going to do too well for your offensive game plan. Another miss by Feather River and the Bulldogs looking to make something happen on their end. Not too much perimeter shooting from either team so far. Always looking for that interior pass. Silly pass. There's, looks like he could have got a foul on that. Not sure why that wasn't called. There's your long three, and it rims out. Rebound by... Natan, who turns around with the putback. Looking like Hakeem right there. And Feather River looking to get a field goal. Their first field goal of the game still. Sloppy pass gets taken. It's picked up by Natane for the Bulldogs. Kicks it out to Busenhardt at the top of the key. Pulls up, can't get it to shoot, but the Bulldogs get the rebound. Keon Nice, oh, almost takes the shot. Gives it up to Obeda. Back to, back to Nice, who bricks it. And Robert Lee III comes up with another rebound. Justice Harvey now dribbling the ball up top of the key. Trying to direct traffic. Gets trapped up by two defenders. When the help comes, there's the easy man open upstairs. The extra pass goes, and it converts. Number 35, Fabian Cox for the, with the first field goal for the Golden Eagles of the game at 15, 15 left on the clock. Not a lot of scoring so far in this game. A lot of ball movement, though. Merchant pulls up from three and drains it. That's a three-on-one going the wrong way for Feather River. They didn't have the rest of the team back. Had to hold the ball up. Coach is probably going to ask for a little bit more hustle down the floor next time. 14 on the shot clock. Pulls up. Baby Cox pulls up, but he can't get the can't get the ball to fall through the rim and 
The Bulldogs taking another three. This time it goes. That was Keon Nice from the opposite side of the floor. 8-3. We're going to take a short break here on NorCal Sports TV. Growing up, I thought basketball was my best path. One shot to success. At San Jose City College, that all changed. My mentors saw more in me than I saw in myself and showed me that I could be anything. No one in my family had ever graduated from college, but I knew I had an obligation for future generations. At San Jose City College, you can go anywhere you want to go and be anything you set out to be. Discover your brilliance at San Jose City College. Yeah, no worries, no worries. Hello and welcome back to NCS TV NorCal Sports. I'm Sonny Oaks, your host. You're watching the third and final matchup of today's San Jose City College tournament, the tip-off tournament. San Jose City won their early game. Merced won a double overtime thriller in the second game. And we close up tonight's action with the Golden Eagles of Feather River and the Bulldogs from San Mateo. Long outlet, long inbound pass, no bueno. Goes right out of bounds off of like seven different players, it felt like. Well, really only off one or two. Feather River keeps possession. Feather River travels well. They brought the whole women's team out with them too. Pretty awesome. A lot of support in this crowd, a lot of, a lot of friends and family for both sides. And a little sloppy play, a little backcourt violation here. Ball's coming back the other way. Bulldogs take over. And they lead the game 11 to 3. See some interior action here as Natane goes up for another one and converts. Full court press here by the Bulldogs. They're trying to keep the pressure on. Six minutes gone in the fourth, the first period. Another miss here by Feather River. They're not having too much luck with these rims tonight. Natane with another one, drills it. Oh, well, that was Alex Martin, I excuse me. A little holding up his dribble there, finding the man on the perimeter who shoots it, can't get it to fall. Justice Harvey would love to get that one back. Merchant drives, gets the foul. No bucket, charge. What a defensive play here by Robert Lee III. He gets the charge on, on Merchant, who was driving hard to the basket. It looks like he had it easy, too, but sometimes all you got to do is stand there. Today's officials are Matt Diddy, LeVon Bowie, LeVon Dowie, and Horace Shields will be our crew chief. You can hear his infectious laugh there on the background. And Feather River calls a timeout. What defense by the Bulldogs to stop that? You're watching NCS TV, NorCal Sports. I'm Sonny Oaks, and we'll be right back after this message. At Golden State Orthopedics and Spine, we want you to get your swing back, get your ride back, get your sprint back, with our top-to-toe orthopedic care throughout the Bay Area, we want you to get your life back. Golden State Orthopedics and Spine, ortho care for life. And we're back. This is NCS TV. I'm Sonny Oaks. NorCal Sports, your only place for exciting, thrilling juke action like this. Feather River is taking on San Mateo Bulldogs. 
And right now the Bulldogs have a commanding 15-3 lead in the first period. Another turnover by Feather River. Oh, couldn't get the put back. Wanted the jam, goes rolling through the floor, but San Mateo maintains possession. Shot goes up, doesn't go down, out of bounds on the Bulldogs. Feather River is going to get the ball back. Here you see Feather River trying to go up. I couldn't just quite convert. The defender gets in the way. Breaks it up. They're trying really their best to keep this from being a runaway so far. Feather River's just had some bad luck with the ball bouncing out of the rim for them. But they've had some good looks. And sooner or later, shooter's going to, you know, the ball's going to fall. Crazy cross the court pass. Open look. Ball doesn't fall yet again. Worst luck so far for the Golden Eagles of Feather River. Oh, I'm sorry, that was the Bulldogs who finally had the ball missed for him. Feather River looking to take advantage, put something on the board here, but they turn it over in the paint. That's Keon Nice with the steal. Oh, and Alex Martin goes up, almost gets blocked from behind, but not. Defense wasn't good enough. 35, big man, Fabian Cox with another bucket in the paint for the Golden Eagles. Merchant coming down. And there's a foul in the paint. And that's going to be on Terry Williams the third. That was Antonio Beta. You see the long outlet. Here's the play before where he just got that little contact and the strength just kept him, kept the momentum going. And then here's that big one, the big man, Fabian Cox. Gets that easy bucket, just gets fed that pass right in the middle. Antonio Beta at the line now. Gets his first. 18 to five, just under 12 left in the first. Doesn't get the second. Feather River gets the rebound, trying to control it. Full court press by the Bulldogs continues to hound, no pun intended, these Golden Eagles. Williams the third goes up and he converts. Robert Lee the third, forgive me. Easy a uh, down court pass and look at, that's Alex Martin, open wide open three, but he can't get it to fall. Jermaine Jordan Jr. with the rebound for the Bulldogs, for the Feather River Golden Eagles. Robert Lee the third shoots, can't get it to fall. Bulldogs again, pass broken up. Pass broken up by Shakur Blaylock who ends up getting the bucket as well at the other end. Good heads up play there. You're gonna need more of those. They've have the deficit now. With just over 11 left in the first. Alex Antonio Beta gets the ball, tries to pass it really slowly, gets the ball taken. Oh, J.D. Carson blocked from behind by the Bulldogs by number four, Justin Miltz. No, so that was Terry Williams, the third who got blocked from behind by Justin Miltz. Great hustle, good defense on both sides. Feather River just needs a couple more of these baskets to fall. Fabian Cox with the ball now feeds it. They get one, there you go, the give and go. J.D. Carson gets this one to go. I'm sorry, Terry Williams the third gets that one to go. Antonio Beta looking to set something up. Long cross court pass to Justin Milch, who's driving, turns around and shoots, scores, nothing but net. The sophomore guard, Justin Milch, with a pretty two-point shot right in front of the basket. Blue, there we go. Jermaine Jordan Jr. with a 10-foot pull-up. Gets that one to drop. It's 20 to 11. Savion Campbell goes up. Can't get it to fall. Robert Lee III comes up the rebound, takes it all the way down. Gives it up to Terry Williams, the third. And we have a foul on the play. Gonna get a chance at three here. Oh, 
There you go. All right, Rush letting us know what's going on. That's Terry Williams the third, the sophomore guard, number 11, shooting for the Golden Eagles. Converts on the first. That, uh, well, that would have been his three points. So now he turns that into a 13 point, a three point play. And a six point deficit now. Oh, he did make the shot. Yeah, it was the first of two. Sometimes I feel like I'm watching a different game than you guys. Just bear with me. I've had a lot of basketball to watch today. And it's good. We have a five point game. Feather River working their way, working their way back into this game. 9.34 left on the clock. Sean Cotton bringing it up. Passes it off to Merchant. Keon Nice drives. Shoots with the right. Can't get the roll. Fabian Cox with the rebound. And Colin Tarver's fouled by Merchant trying to get the ball up court. Oh, the opposite way. It's going to be the Bulldogs ball. Colin Tarver fouled it. Malik Merchant, so it's going to be Bulldogs ball. Oh, it was a travel. All right, Merchant working on Tarver again. Kicks it out to Martin, who drives, puts his shoulder down. That's going to be an offensive foul. Tarver takes another one for the team. It remains a five-point game. Sometimes that's what you got to do when you're the small guy. Hey, you see the 24 just thinks he's got this all day, comes in, that shoulder comes down, and he just sends young man flying. All right, this full court press by San Mateo is, is impressive. Malik Merchant looking like an actual bulldog on, on Jermaine Jordan Jr. out there. And they finally get it past half court. Tarver can't find any space to get it. And Keon Nice just takes it away from him. And it looks going to be a foul here on Tarver again. Trying to make up for that, that turnover. So it's going to be Bulldogs ball on the other side. Nope. Feather River gets that one. Good for them. Nice hustle play by Tarver. So Harvard on the wing guarded by Nice. Has to give it up. And we have another turnover by the Golden Eagles. Bulldogs bringing it up now with the five point lead. Just over eight and a half left in this first period. Tim Natane driving, guarded by 20, goes up and he gets it, goes up strong and is rewarded for the effort. Tim Natane with eight on the game so far. Tarver looking to make something happen, kicks it out. Oh no, not a good pass to Justice Harvey who gets control back. Not a good shooting night so far for Feather River Eagles. Maybe the inside game will get something going and Fabian Cox with another inside layup. Feather, San Mateo right back down the court with it. As Tim Natane goes up, he's got 10 on the game. Full court press still. Justice Harvey being harassed by Sean Cotton. Passes goes back into Fabian, but he's too far out. But he pulls up, doing the cat, and he drains it. Minnesota's going to want to take a look at this guy. It's 19 to 24. Natane, it's a lot of defense around him, tries to go up, has to get rid of it. They almost lose it out of bounds. Malik Merchant ends up with the ball at the top of the key. He drives with the left. Can't get it to fall. Fabian Cox gets going up for the rebound. Can't get it. His teammate gets it, but they turn it over right away. Sean Cotton goes up, gets the bucket, and one. Sean Cotton making an impact in his first few minutes of the game. Here's the sophomore guard. You'll see him come up here on this just take it right up there and go up with the left. And he gets the foul. That's T five team fouls for. Oh, and there's that Fabian Cox pull up looking like Cat from 20 feet.
All right, the sophomore guard getting ready to shoot his free throw. Can't convert for the three-point play, but we have... We had a foul on the rebound um, on the Bulldogs. So Feather River's going to get the ball after that failed three-point attempt. Three-point play attempt by Cotton. Full court press in full effect here. We've been seeing it all day from just about every team. But I don't know if I've ever seen anybody do it with the same intensity as the Bulldogs yet today. These Golden Eagles are having to get rid of the ball very quickly. And they just got forced into yet another backcourt violation. I believe that's two on the night. And a little frustration starting to show on the, on the body language of some of these Golden Eagles. It's too early in the game for that, young men. Let's see if we can't get it together. A couple, couple points on the board will fix everything. The Bulldogs not slowing down at all. Oh, good defense here. Great defense by Terry Williams III. Harassing Tim Natane. And they go, they bring it up. Jermaine Jordan Jr. gets in the middle of that, but Bulldogs somehow come back up with it. They get an open look when it's at the end of the shot clock. Nope, shot clock violation. Great defense. Great defense on that possession. This is what you're going to do if you want to get back into this. It's only a six, seven point game right now. But that full court press has really been a downfall tonight so far for the Eagles. You're going to have to find a way to get that, that ball up to half court a lot easier. Zone defense being played. Man, they got this man. Oh no, they're switching them. Alright, they're playing man up right now. Bulldogs get the ball off the rebound. And failed attempt. Natain baseline. Pass gets picked off by Jermaine Jordan Jr. Two on two. He goes reverse. Left hand can't get it to fall. And Sean Cotton ends up with it. Passes it to Malik Malerch and he's looking to set up the offense. Picks up his dribble. Robert Lee the third playing some aggressive defense there. Doesn't get a foul though. Natane. Right back into the paint. Pulls up and gets it off the glass. 12 from my man Tim Natane. The freshman forward. Justice Harvey trying to get something going now. He kicks it out to Terry Williams third. Robert Lee the third. And then back. Yeah, double. He traveled on that. So we've seen a few traveling calls today. As the Bulldogs start to pull away, it's 19:28 with 5:04 left. Here we see this play by Matane. That's just been his go-to: get the paint, get within 12 feet, pull up. He's been. That's probably the furthest shot we've seen him take. But it looked clean right off the glass. Milts with the ball now. He goes up with a finger roll. Gets it to drop over three defenders. That full court press still hounding. Feather River. Taking them seven to ten seconds to get it up the mid court each time. Tarver top of the key guarded by Merchant. Gets it in to William to Lee the third. Can't convert. Bulldogs take over. They're already back baseline. Milch looking for somebody. Feeds it inside. Oh, the extra pass. Another easy bucket. We got Lane Barnett. We got a number 42. That's Tino Stemberga with the bucket for the Bulldogs. Who benefited from the second pass. Lee of the third. Tarver shoots. Drains it. 10-point game, 22-32 with 3.55 left in the half. Milch wide open at the three-point line. Can't get it to fall. Bulldogs get the rebound. And we're going to see a... We're going to see a foul here on 13. That's Marcus Connolly. Here's that shot by Tarver. Got a good look. Finally got one to fall. They need to start getting a few more good looks. Oh, and then here you go. You're going to see that one by Stemberga come in with that extra pass made the big difference, made it an easy bucket for the big man. Seen his first minutes. 
All right, Bulldogs on the inbounds, just a tip throw up. Alex Martin catches in the air and one. So he's going to get a chance to make this a three-point play. We're going to have a few substitutions for the Bulldogs. Milt stays on the court. Stenberger starts on the court. Alex Martin still on the court. Malik Merchant still on the court. And Shakur Blaylock, the sophomore guard. Alex Martin converts the three-point play. That full court press back in full effect. Big man dribbling on the perimeter. Tries to feed it to the outside. Fabian Cox taking the three. Hits the side of the backboard. It's going to be the Bulldogs ball. Fresh shot clock. It's 35-22. You can see Milch looking at himself. He's talking to himself. He wants to make sure he gets that next shot and he gets an open look like that. You can tell it's still, he's still thinking about it. Bulldogs and... Pretty much control of this game so far. I wouldn't say it's just a size advantage. They have some big guys. And we see another foul up against Harvard. They're spreading this out. They Oh, he got the charge. It's going to be Feather River's ball. Look at it. Harvard just put his body on the line as you see Merchant looking, going to drive on him. Oh, he put an elbow in his chest. Yeah, that's not going to count, is it? Here comes that full court press. It's just relentless by the Bulldogs. It caused a few turnovers. These Golden Eagles got to figure out how to exploit that mismatch. They're leaving too many guys open down floor. Back and forth now, passing it around, swinging around the arc. Almost had a three. Looked like he was showing like he was going to shoot. Shot clock at eight. Almost gave it up. It's going to have to shoot any second now. Robert Lee third drives, goes up with the right. Kids off the glass can get it. Fabi Cox with the putback. That's 10 for him on the night. Bulldogs already back on attack. Alex Martin goes up, can't get it. Natane with the rebound. Blocked. Number five, Colin Tarver comes up from behind. Laid a wood on that, on that attempt. Here we go, it's Lee the third going up with the right where he couldn't get it. Fabian Cox is put back. Big man scored 10 with that right there. Now here you see a couple of battles for the, this is where you can see Carver come up behind the back and just put it down. Alex Martin thought he had an easy bucket there. Colin Tarver having none of it. He could be down by 11. We're still out here for pride. That's what he was letting him know. 11 can become an 11 point lead real quick. A little talking on the floor. Refs are talking about it, trying to figure it out. Let's listen and see if we can see what's being said. All right, these young men are putting it hard on their sleeve right now. All right, Bulldogs inbound. Natane looking to back down his defender. Pulls up. Can't get the fall. That's an over the back on Cotton. Almost put an elbow on Lee's back at Lee's head. Looks like he might have got it. Lee's touching the back of his head. Like he did get it. Hopefully, luckily he got a helmet of hair. Couldn't hurt too bad. Feather River to inbound now. Down by 11 with 2.30 left in the half. That full court press is just non-stop. This time it's a beta on Tarver. The switches here are pretty clean by the Bulldogs. Which is why there hasn't been a lot of open looks. And that ball gets turned over. Hands in the passing lanes and Golden Eagles just can't, just can't keep the ball long enough to get a good shot off half the possessions they have. A beta pushing now. Milch wants to shoot. He's driving. He's pushing on Lee. Trying to get something going. He has to give it up. See Natane out here. Always working. Always working. Milch all the way on the wing. Left alone. Can't get this one to fall. Yeah, Fabian Cox and Merchant to the floor. Feather River comes up with it. 
They're going to call a foul on Merchant while he went to the floor right there. That's 17 fouls. So they're in the bonus. We're going to see a couple shots coming up here. Make sure you go to NorCal Sports TV and subscribe. Make sure you hit the like button, share, unsubscribe, subscribe again. Like it a couple more times. Send the link to your friends. And follow us on Twitter. You can also follow me on Twitter, at Big Show Sonny O. Your voice here at, at the home of the Jags. All right, two shots coming up here for Fabian Cox. Hasn't been any scores in a while. 150 left in the first half. Fabian Cox nails it. So it's a 10-point game with under two left in the half. Feather River struggled. Feather River has struggled to get a good shots off tonight, but they seem to be doing well when they feed the big man in the middle who's holding it down for the Golden Eagles with 11 points. On the other side, Tim Natane, the freshman forward, has 12 for the Bulldogs, and he has been a reincarnation of a Bulldog on offense and defense. There we go. Colin Tarver takes one up, and he drills it. 28-35, minute 35 left in this. Milch driving, has to give it up. Nice, shoots, can't get it. Fabian Cox almost has the rebound, goes out of his hand. Nice, gets the rebound, pulls it, gets up. And another bucket. Terry Williams the third, getting harassed by Justin Milch. Just making it over the half court line at 20 seconds on the shot clock. Tarver now driving, loses the ball. Fabian Cox comes up with it, goes up, gets fouled from behind. He's going to go back to the line. He's already got 11 on the night. Eight team fouls now on San Mateo. Five on the Eagles. Fabian Cox looks to be the biggest guy on the Golden Eagles roster, so you can expect him to get his name called a lot whenever they whenever they see that matchup down low, that mismatch down low. Feather River coach making some adjustments, talking to some of the players back. Uh, Beta now pushing. No full court press from Feather River. Long three by Keon Nice. Doesn't fall. Feather River now with a chance. Tarver pulls up just short to Tim Natane. Driving, passes it. Cotton, good. They finally found a way to get the ball up court before 20 seconds, and they turn it right over. Oh, it looks, nope, they keep possession with 25 on the shot clock, so this will actually be the best position they've been in on this side of the court for a while. Most of the first half has taken them about 20 seconds to get to half court, 10 seconds off the clock. All right, they're swinging the ball around. Tarver almost had an open shot, but he's got to give it up again. Give it inside. Fabian's outside. He had an open shot for a second, but this Bulldogs defense is tenacious. Lee the third goes up, does a windmill, can't get it to fall. He hits the floor. And it's a foul on Sean Cotton. So Lee a little shook up on the play, slow to get up. He's going to go to the line for two. One and one for Fabian Cox. So it's a foul off the ball. He gets the first, makes it 31. It's an eight point game. There's no quit in these teams. There's no quit in these players, nor the coaches. They're gonna scrap and fight till the last whistle's blown. All right, Bulldogs having a beta bring it up. Guarded by Tarver. Lee the third with a big steal at half court. Brings it in for a bucket as the clock winds down. Shot wouldn't have counted if it went up. So it's 
The Bulldogs have the lead after one half. You're watching NorCal Sports. Take this time to go like and subscribe our YouTube page. We'll be back after these messages for the second half. Growing up, I thought basketball was my best path. One shot to success. At San Jose City College, that all changed. My mentors saw more in me than I saw in myself and showed me that I could be anything. No one in my family had ever graduated from college, but I knew I had an obligation for future generations. At San Jose City College, you can go anywhere you want to go and be anything you set out to be. Discover your brilliance at San Jose City College. drove all the way up from Los Angeles. From we Los just Angeles. heard that. What made you put Miles Little into the camp? Well, you know, we were looking for an overnight camp that would really help develop his sort of independence. Um, and this looked like a beautiful setting for the kids um, and also really foster his independence, meet new people. And I want to say one of the best, best things about this um, camp, this particular camp, is the ability to see the games uh, live streamed on YouTube. It allows you to not be at camp but also still participate in that particular part of camp and so I thought that was really amazing the announcers were great the angles the instant replay it really made the kids feel special would you bring Miles Little back oh, up to camp for sure a hundred percent and we're bringing friends I think um, one of the wonderful things that I saw when I came to pick him up is how um, collegial supportive um, the older boys are with the younger boys and I think that that um, is really heartening for me because that's how I want my boy to be when he grows up and so I think that he has some really great um, examples of really kind people on and off the court here. Growing up I thought basketball was my best path one shot to success. At San Jose City College that all changed. My mentors saw more in me than I saw in myself and showed me that I could be anything. No one in my family had ever graduated from college but I knew I had an obligation for future generations. At San Jose City College, you can go anywhere you want to go and be anything you set out to be. Discover your brilliance at San Jose City College.
Growing up, I thought basketball was my best path, one shot to success. At San Jose City College, that all changed. My mentors saw more in me than I saw in myself and showed me that I could be anything. No one in my family had ever graduated from college, but I knew I had an obligation for future generations. At San Jose City College, you can go anywhere you want to go and be anything you set out to be. Discover your brilliance at San Jose City College. drove all the way up from Los Angeles. From we Los just Angeles. heard that. What made you put Miles Little into the camp? Well, you know, we were looking for an overnight camp that would really help develop his sort of independence. Um, and this looked like a beautiful setting for the kids um, and also really foster his independence, meet new people. And I want to say one of the best, best things about this um, camp, this particular camp, is the ability to see the games uh, live streamed on YouTube. It allows you to not be at camp but also still participate in that particular part of camp and so I thought that was really amazing the announcers were great the angles the instant replay it really made the kids feel special would you bring Miles Little back oh, up to camp for sure a hundred percent and we're bringing friends I think um, one of the wonderful things that I saw when I came to pick him up is how um, collegial supportive um, the older boys are with the younger boys and I think that that um, is really heartening for me because that's how I want my boy to be when he grows up. And so I think that he has some really great um, examples of really kind people on and off the court here. Growing up, I thought basketball was my best path, one shot to success. At San Jose City College, that all changed. My mentors saw more in me than I saw in myself and showed me that I could be anything. No one in my family had ever graduated from college but I knew I had an obligation for future generations. At San Jose City College, you can go anywhere you want to go and be anything you set out to be. Discover your brilliance at San Jose City College. Good evening, I'm Sonny Oaks, and you're watching NCS TV, NorCal Sports TV. 
Today is the first day of the San Jose City College tip-off tournament, and we're watching the second half of the Feather River Golden Eagles and the San Mateo Bulldogs, who have the lead 39-33 so far. The leading scorers for each team is 14 Tim Natane for the Bulldogs, and number 35 Fady and Cox, who also has 14. He has 14 on the game. Pretty much been the Bulldogs game. They've been playing that full court press since the very beginning of the game. You know, Feather River started, they couldn't buy a bucket really to the first three quarters of that period. They finally started to get them to fall and they brought it back within six. We'll see what happens now. So all the three games, we've seen a lot of heart from all the players, from all the teams. I don't expect that to end anytime soon. A lot of support for this Feather River team, too. The whole women's team is out here supporting them. They made the trip. A beta leading it off. Natain out to Merchant. Shot no good. Lee the third comes up with the rebound as Justice Harvey brings the ball back up for Feather River. So those are the sort of stops that Feather River's got to get if they want to stay in this one. They worked hard to get it to within six. Let's see if they can close the gap even more. Harvey takes the jumper, falls for him. And the Bulldogs already back on attack. They've been doing this all game, just nonstop movement. Their coach is preaching that Curry game. Just move, move, move off the ball. There's a couple guys standing around now, so it's not 100% off the ball movement. But you'll see a lot of it. A couple times they'll clear out. A beta pulls up from beyond the arc, doesn't get it. And Robert Lee III goes up, gets it off to Terry Williams III. And they get a bucket. It's a two-point game, folks, 37-39. So if you pick that up, we have Terry Williams the third and Robert Lee the third on the Golden Eagles. I don't know which one we call Trey. Is one Trey and the other Trey Deuce? Not sure. So we got a timeout. We're going to send you to a quick commercial on NCS. At Golden State Orthopedics and Spine, we want you to get your swing back, get your ride back, get your sprint back, with our top-to-toe orthopedic care throughout the Bay Area, we want you to get your life back. Golden State Orthopedics and Spine, ortho care for life. At Golden State Ortho... All right, welcome back to the action here on NorCal Sports TV. I'm your host, Sonny Oaks, as the San Mateo Bulldogs have let their lead evaporate over the Golden Eagles of Feather River. It's only a two-point game now as Feather River has battled back from some poor early game shooting to get this game within two. And the drive, Lee goes up, gets it blocked. Looked like it was blocked by Jack Guzenhart. Scrum on the floor. The ball's going to Feather River. So that hustle will pay off. And we have another timeout, so we'll be back after this message here on NCS NorCal Sports TV. Go Jaguars! Nothing better than opening day and nothing better than opening day on a new field, in a new yard. So I'm really excited about this, uh, not only for the school, but for the athletes as well. It's a cork, it's a cork infill, a softer for less impact. I think it'll be a player friendly. Uh, not, as, not as much impact on the body, not as much wear and tear on the body. Yeah, well, it's an exciting thing for the school, for the neighborhood, uh, for everybody, and it looks awesome. I'm excited to see the, the progress, and first game, great, great day for San Jose City College. So having athletics here, in addition to our quality academic programs, really provides a holistic experience for our students. And that's what I love about SJCC and I'm very thankful to our community with uh, uh, passing the bond so that we can really upscale our facilities for our students. A 
Okay, thank you. And we're back here on NorCal Sports TV. I'm your host, Sonny Oaks. The Bulldogs taking on the Golden Eagles from Feather River. Two-point game here with 18-10 left in the half in the game. Feather River's battled back within two. They love to even this game up, but Nice takes the steal, and he goes coast to coast, can't convert. Feather River with another chance to tie. CT, Colin Tarver with the three. And that gives the Golden Eagles their first lead of the game. I uh, just saw a travel called. Look at that shot, just pure net. Merchant driving now. Obeda looking for help, throws it across the court. Tim Natain, the leading scorer, has to pass it inside, but it's sloppy and it's taken. By Marcus Marquise Wagner with that steal. C.T. Tarver with another three. No good. Natane for the Bulldogs with the rebound. Gives it up. So Keon Nice can't convert. So we're going, oh, he does convert. So now the Bulldogs retake the lead, 41-40. Just as Harvey trying to make something happen, has to dish it off to Marquise Wagner, who goes up. Can't get the bucket to fall. And Merchant for the Bulldog pumps up the rebound, but he's finally getting that full court press. Oh, and Harvey missed on the defense, but missed on the dunk. Keon Nice missed on the dunk. And so now we have a foul. So that's going to be on Terry Williams, the third. Bulldogs are going to shoot. So it's a one-point game. Not quite five minutes into this. Second half. Oh, no shooting. Off the ball. Bulldogs, with their movement, you wonder if they'll get tired out before the Feather River team does. We got another whistle on the floor. This was on number 11. This was, yes, this was again on Terry Williams, the third. Still being out of bounds and inbound from the side. So you're seeing a lot of the same offensive setups here for the Bulldogs. They like to run two guys at the top and then just start spinning them off each other from the wing. And they get a put back here. And Tang goes down. Looks like he drew a foul. Might have been before the shot. That's what it looks like. So Natane's going to go back up for two. The foul was on number 20. Marquise Wagner. That's his second. So that's three team fouls for the Eagles already with just under four minutes, just over four minutes played. Ten doesn't convert on the first. Doesn't get the second. Feather River comes up with the rebound. That's Jermaine Jordan Jr. Sometimes the smallest guy comes up with the ball. You watch the Warriors, you see Steph Curry with a lot of rebounds. Lee has to pick it up. He passes it into Wagner. Nice spin move off the glass. Gets the bucket and one. They take back the lead, 42-41. The foul was on Tim Natane. That's going to be his third. Mm, the 
shot's good. That makes it 43-41. Three-point play for the young man. Cotton brings it up, kicks it out to Merchant for the Bulldogs. All right, the crowd getting alive. Feather River travels well. You can hear him get into the game now. Bulldogs with a rare sloppy pass. Cotton back in the back out, comes right back in. We have a whistle on the play. It's on the floor. So that was a reach on CT, Colin Tarver, the freshman guard for the Golden Eagles. So with just over 15 left in the game, Natane starts to back down the defenders again, goes up with one hand, just can't get it to fall. He had that shot working early in the first period. Keeps going back to it because it works for him. He just can't get the shot to fall. Lee the third tries to get that pass into CT, Colin Tarver, who kicks it out to Wagner, gets an easy bucket inside, gathers the ball and just goes up. Elevates and gets the ball in, a little float. And the Bulldogs, as always, fast on the attack. Alex Martin trying to back down his defender. Can't get the shot to drop. Marquise Wagner comes up with the rebound. CT Colin Tarver going to bring it up. He's guarded by Merchant. Looking. To... Let's see what Lee does with it now. Everybody just standing around. Lee's going to one-on-one -on -one him. Tries to bring it into him, but he kicks it back out. Fabian Cox all the way on the wing, nowhere near the paint, and he throws the ball away. 23. Keon Nice for the Bulldogs comes up with it, kicks it in to Alex Martin, who goes up and gets fouled. That foul was on Robert Lee, the third. That was only his first of the game. Feather River now has five team fouls, while the Bulldogs only have one in the second half. 14-14 on the clock. 45-41 is the score. No good. That buzzer just to make you feel bad about it right after. Feather River talking about what they want to do after this shot. The ball bounces up and down a couple times, doesn't fall down. Feather River comes up with the rebound. CT pushing right now. He definitely wants to take this himself. He goes up, gets a little funny move. He had Fabi Cox trailing, who goes up and he gets fouled, trying to put that failed shot by CT up. So the leading scorer, here you see CT going up a little bit wild with it with a windmill. Fabian comes up and he just gets fouled by 35. On the other seat, on the other team, Deshaun Johnson. I believe that's the first time. He's a freshman forward. Cox drills the first one. That'll give him 15 on the game. CT's holding back second place on that team with 12. The rest of the team is struggling for points. Cox can't convert on both. So the Bulldogs. Grab it on the rebound. Sean Cotton for the Bulldogs. Looking for some help. Alex Martin driving. Goes up against Cox. Rejected by Cox. Straight up deny. Looking like the Kimbe here in the paint. Bulldogs take a three. No good. Two of the Bulldogs battling for the rebound. Lose it. Goes out of bounds. Feather River is going to take over. They lead the game 46 41. Oh no, it did go off a Feather River player. So Bulldogs are going to. Nope, Feather River's got the ball. CT's already at half court. Look at the score. Kicks it out to Fabian, who gets two defenders in the air, throws it up, and it's good. They're starting to push this lead now. It's 48 41 when they were down uh, 10 or 11 with seven or eight minutes to go in the first. They've really just swung this game around. This 15-foot jumper goes up, but it's no good. 
That was Savion Campbell. So now we see Marcus Connolly bringing the ball up for Feather River. CT kicks it out to Connolly. Connolly wide open. Drains the three, sees nothing but the bottom of the net, and we have a timeout by the Bulldogs. Let's take a look at that play real quick before we go off the commercial. What a nice little pass from Connolly, from CT to Connolly. Look at it right there, no one near him, no one within 15, 20 feet. We'll see you after these messages. This is NCS TV. I'm Sonny Oaks, NorCal Sports. Here, look at that, drained it. Open sideline, no one near him. That's a three pointer, and it's 51 41. That's a 10 point lead. We'll be back. Growing up, I thought basketball was my best path, one shot to success. At San Jose City College, that all changed. My mentors saw more in me than I saw in myself and showed me that I could be anything. No one in my family had ever graduated from college, but I knew I had an obligation for future generations. At San Jose City College, you can go anywhere you want to go and be anything you set out to be. Discover your brilliance at San Jose City College. Hello and welcome back to NorCal Sports TV. I'm Sonny Oaks. You're watching the College of San Mateo go against the Feather River Golden Eagles who battled back to take a 10-point lead. We we're down by 10 at one point in this game. And they continue their second-half dominance, creating another turnover on defense. I'm not sure what's happening with the Bulldogs. They've been playing a full-court press on defense the whole game, and they're back to it, but not with the same intensity we saw in the first half. Milch almost gets, almost loses his shoes off that, that one. And you can see Jordan Jr. just hanging out in this corner, seeing if they can get another one of those corner threes. He sneaks inside, goes up against Merchant, who gets the block. Shakur Blaylock brings it out of the court. Merchant ends up with getting the shot, doesn't get it to fall. Two players, oh, the Bulldogs get it and detained with it now on the wing. Bulldog drive. Merchant goes up. He's going to get bailed out by the ref. He goes down on the floor and he's going to shoot too. So here we're looking at it. You see him go up. The block there. And they brought it back to the other side. So 10 point game. 11.50 left in this, in this, in this half. He converts on the first. Scoreboard, uh, scoreboard got that right. Okay. So he converts on the first. The scoreboard operator gets it right, gives the points to the right team, and now it's a nine-point game. Merchant set to shoot his second, and he kills them both. So we got an eight-point game. Nine point game. Feather River gets another conversion, but no. This looks like an offensive foul, so it's going to go back the other way. Yeah, moving screen, easy one to call. You can see that right in the middle of your screen. Just. Looked like he was dosy do with him. Don't know what to tell you. Fabian Cox trying to guard on the perimeter. Bulldogs, Milch pulls up. Doesn't get the shooter's roll. Bulldogs rebound. Connolly right there to eat it up, but the rest call him for the, for the foul over the back. 18 fouls for the Bulldogs, two for the Golden Eagles. 11.20 left in the contest. So we're going to see two shots here from Shakur Blaylock. Gets the first one. So for as much as they must feel stress for giving up that 10 point lead and having to swing the other way. They've maintained their composure and it hasn't grown any. And they've been chipping away at it. Connolly comes up with the rebound. He kicks it out to Williams three to bring up.
Williams passes it. The shot goes up and it's good for Jermaine Jordan Jr. Showing that strength, he gets, he gets the bucket. 53-44. Back on defense, no full court press from Feather River. It's not their style so far. Shakur Blaylock looking, looking, drives, spins, trips over his own feet. It's gonna be a turnover. Golden Eagles get the ball back. Yeah, you see that? He just sort of tripped over his own feet trying to make something happen. It happens. We've all been there. His feet might still be growing. All right, that full court press stays in effect by the Bulldogs. They're not giving up on that. Lee trying to make something happen on the perimeter. Shot goes up and it's good. 10.30 left in the game. Feather River started to take this one. Malik Merchant driving, driving, goes up with the left and he gets it off the glass. What a beautiful little shot. You really got to be comfortable with that, that hand to go up that way off glass. And, and he nailed it, made it look like it was just... Easy, easy work. Oh, Eagle River, almost, uh, Golden Eagles almost give it up. But, oh my gosh, Williams the third with another tray. And the Golden Eagles are starting to pull away. The Bulldogs pressing, already got a shot off. Lee goes up for the ball and lands on Milch's back. I believe that will be a foul in any country. Here we go. He takes the three. Lee, that was Williams the third with the tray. You saw him wide open. That's the thing about Feather River. Oh, okay, we're going to take a quick commercial break here. You're listening to NorCal Sports TV. I'm Sonny Oaks. We'll be right back. I'm Sonny Oaks, and you're watching NorCal Sports TV. Please add and subscribe and like our page on YouTube. Go find us on Twitter. Big Show Sonny O, the voice of SJCC. Go Jags. We've seen three games. This is our third game of three today at the San Jose City College tip-off. San Jose City took their game. The second game, Merced won after coming back. They battled back for it. And we're starting to see the same story here with the Golden Eagles of Feather River, who were down over 10, maybe 11 points in the first period, worked their way back, got close by the end of the first, and now they're, they're taking a lead here. They're up by 12 with 9.34 left in the game, and Bulldogs are still running that full court press, but they scored maybe 13 points this period. So they're, they're not really, that might be wearing out. Notes all over, Lee. A lot less movement now. Oh man, he caught him off there, created the space, but didn't see that he had the shot. There we go, now we're seeing some offensive movement. The shot goes up, but it's not good. He falls short, hits the front of the rim. Natane, who was on fire in the first half, kicks it out to Malik Merchant, shoots the three, rims out. And we're gonna get Feather River ball. As there was a couple of guys going for it underneath the rim and you'll see as it bounces it kind of hits the back of his jersey as the Feather River guy comes in and he's sure not convinced of it. Yeah, Tim Natane's cooled off on the first half. He had 14 I believe in the first half and with 12 in the first half he had yet to score in the second. 
Connolly goes up, gets it after a little roll. 60 to 46, the Golden Eagles started to really run away with this matchup. 840 left in the game. The freshman forward looking to score again, goes up with the left hand off the glass, he's good. Got a little Kareem on that one. 14 in the game now for Tim Natane, Natane. All right, Williams the third looking to make something happen for Feather River. Just dribbling it out, making Fabian Cox work for that money. Get it out to Connolly on the perimeter. No good. And Busenhart with the rebound for the Bulldogs. Foul on the floor. A little reach-in foul, looks like. Only three team fouls. This might be the fourth. For the Golden Eagles. Meanwhile, the Bulldogs have nine that, I, that I've counted. So it's going to be an inbound. No team. There we go. Finish these substitutions. All right, Connolly goes back to the bench. Malik Merchant goes back to the bench. Oh, we're going to have a jump ball? Oh, no, it's two shots. One on one here. Tim Tain at the line. Natani. It's good. So he's going to get another one. You know, if you don't make your free throws, there's pretty much no chance of ever coming back. So these are very important. Can't get the second one, unfortunately. He wishes he had that one back. All right. Williams the third, bringing the ball up for Feather River. Kicks it out to CT, Colin Tarver. Finds Connolly, who's back in. Shoots that three, doesn't get it. But Lee the third picks up the rebound, gets it to CT, who shoots the three, rims out. Tim Natane with the rebound. Driving right into the paint, going right at Lee the third, and here's a foul. Lee the third didn't plant his feet. It looked like it might have been moving to the side. We're going to check that out here on the replay. Tim Detaney was on fire this first half. Significantly cooled off. Here we go. Yeah, he, he, he didn't have his feet planted. He thought he did, but they just got together. They were bringing them together. So Natane shoots his free throws. And his first one's good. So what looked like it was going to be a start to be a runaway in the first half going one way, the Bulldogs were in absolute command of the first period. First half. It's been a different story as Natane sinks his second. Different half in the second story. It's been all Feather River. Just the last two minutes has San Mateo started to show some life offensively. Oh. CT was looking for a player down court. But his teammate wasn't looking back. Travel by Lee the third. Just off the rim. Bulldogs get the ball back with nine point deficit. You're gonna see it come in right here. He's gonna take a couple steps. It's sloppy inbound, sloppy pass from him from CT. Abeda goes up with all sorts of defenders and he gets it to fall. What, a, what an amazing shot by Antonio Abeda, one of the smaller guys on the court. Goes up and brings it right to the heart of the defense. Gets the buckets, paid off for his persistence. That's a timeout. You're watching NorCal Sports TV. We'll be back after these messages. Nothing better than opening day and nothing better than opening day on a new field in a new yard, so I'm really excited about this, uh, not only for the school, but for the athletes as well. It's a cork, it's a cork infill, a softer for less impact. I think it'll be a player friendly, uh, not, as, not as much impact on the body, not as much wear and tear on the body. Yeah, well, it's an exciting thing for the school, for the neighborhood, uh, for everybody, and it looks awesome. I'm excited to see the, the progress, and first game, great, great day for San Jose City College. Hey. 
So having athletics here in addition to our quality academic programs really provides a holistic experience for our students and that's what I love about SJCC and I'm very thankful to our community with uh, uh, passing the bond so that we can really upscale our facilities for our students. And we're back here on NCS, NorCal Sports TV. I'm your host, Sonny Oaks. Feather River taking on San Mateo Bulldogs. It's been a reversal of fortune from first half to second half, where the Bulldogs were in command the first half, the Feather River Golden Eagles have really taken over to second. And in the last three minutes, the Bulldogs have started to fight back. They're only down by seven. They were down as much by 11 or 12 early, just a couple minutes ago. A little bit sloppy on the inbounds. They get the turnover. The Bulldogs pushing it. Abeda looking for the long three. Drills it. It's a four-point game with 6-11 to go. Abeda fearless with that shot. Williams, Lee, I'm sorry, bringing it up. Looking to drive. Kicks it out, an extra pass to Williams who can't get that ball inside the hoop. Hits the front of the rim on that three attempt. Here we go, looking, here's a beta. Just pulls up right with the defender in his face. He's giving up about four inches there too. Three inches at least. Mutane. Trying to drive on Cox. Gives him a little fake and, and can't get it to go off the glass. Oh, and a little hit to the face there. Keon Nice got Colin Tarver in the face. Definitely not on purpose, but getting a good call for the reaching foul. That's at least 10 team fouls on the Bulldogs tonight. Full court press in effect. You can see a beta just getting in his face as much as he can. They might have the interior. They do, but it gets blocked. 23 Keon, nice. With an incredible block. Feather River maintains possession. Colin Tarver splits the defense. The finger roll off the glass. 62-56 with 5.07 left. The three goes up. Feather River comes down with the rebound. Malik Merchant won't let it go. Struggles for that. Knocks the ball out, but he might have picked up a foul. Let's look at it right here. Here's CT just splitting through the defense. Looking like Dame or Steph undersized and just making everybody miss him as he cuts through. There's this foul. There's that block that Keon Nice had him. Just came up out of nowhere and just put a whole hand on the ball. And that was the end of that. All right, Malik Merchant is going to get two shots here. Malik Merchant with six points on the night, looking to add to that total. Make it seven. So Tim Natan, Natane, who had... 12 in the first first period. He's got five this half. Significant drop off and the Bulldogs have really needed it. They get another attempt off the missed free throw. Malik gets it back. Misses. Ball's going to go off Feather River. It's going to be Bulldogs ball. Just couldn't grab onto it. It came right to him. Less than five to go now in the game. Feather River trying to hold on to a slim margin after battling back from a double point, de double digit deficit. Malik Merchant lets it go. Connolly comes down with the rebound for Feather River. Looking for his teammate, almost loses the dribble. That full court defense. Oh, they got a wide open guy here. 
the drive doesn't make it, but Fabian Cox is there for the putback. That's 19 for the big man. Abeda tries that shake and bake on Colin, doesn't go. Keon Nice pulls up, gets the roll, gets the bounce, and it falls. Bucket's good. Here we go. Here's that putback by Fabian, just using his size and strength. We're going to do a full timeout, so we're going to go to commercial. You've been watching. All the way up from Los Angeles, from we Los just Angeles. heard that. What made you put Miles Little into the camp? Well, you know, we were looking for an overnight camp that would really help develop his sort of independence. Um, and this looked like a beautiful setting for the kids um, and also really foster his independence, meet new people. And I want to say one of the best, best things about this um, camp, this particular camp, is the ability to see the games uh, live streamed on YouTube. It allows you to not be at camp, but also still participate in that particular part of camp. And so I thought that was really amazing. The announcers were great. The angles, the instant replay, it really made the kids feel special. Would you bring Miles Little back oh, up to camp? For sure, 100%, and we're bringing friends. I think um, one of the wonderful things that I saw when I came to pick him up is how um, collegial, supportive um, the older boys are with the younger boys. And I think that that um, is really heartening for me because that's how I want my boy to be when he grows up. And so I think that he has some really great um, examples of really kind people on and off the court here. Hello and welcome back to NorCal Sports TV. I'm your host, Sonny Oaks. We're here at the exciting conclusion to game three of the San Jose College City College Tournament. Feather River is taking on San Mateo. Four point game with less than four to go. It's been an up and down battle for both teams with each taking double digit leads at different point. Each team fighting back. And look at this cutting. Marquise Wagner with another bucket for the Golden Eagles of Feather River. Antonio Abeda for the Bulldogs, kicks it out. Alex Martin drives, goes up with the left, and he gets the little roll. Four-point game again. Ooh, great defense there. Throws it off the Feather River player. That was Merchant. Now there's some chirping. Now they're talking about it. Stale Feather River ball. Look at that full board crest of Beta all over Colin. All right, they let him up toward half court. 3-11 left on the clock. Fabian Cox looking for Connolly in the corner. They're just spreading that. They're just pushing that ball around. There's only six seconds left on the shot clock. Williams has to shoot in the paint, drives, drops, and one. Stares down Malik Merchant as the ball drops in the hole. Merchant can't believe the foul call. 68-62 with 2.55 left in the game. You can hear the Feather River crowd. They're loving it. They watched their team come back from a double-digit deficit in the first half. So here's that play again. You'll see Merchant right on him. Not sure how he got that foul. And you'll see the bounce in there and the stare down just for a moment right after. Williams converts, makes it a three-point play. 69-62, Feather River. Just under three to play. Mm, here they come. Clock is ticking down. Let's see if they go for these easy twos or they pull up for these contested jumpers. Natane takes one of those contested, but it's not that bad. He gets it to fall. So the river still dealing with that full court. It doesn't get it to fall. Connolly, a lot of ball movement here by Feather River. They turn it over, and Natane comes up with the steal, passes it forward to a beta, goes up, doesn't get it. The putback, no good. Natane's putback, good. There's the points he needed. And we have a foul whistle on the floor. That's a substitution. All right, 69-66, three-point game. Here you see that shot by Natane. 
couple of putbacks, no good, but that guy has been hustling that freshman forward, putting in work tonight. Look at that, Feather River gives up the inbound and they turn it over and now it's 69-68. A lot of talking going on between these two teams. Two minutes left to play. Both teams, oh, double dribble on Feather River. Who, Colin Tarver gets called for the double dribble and turns the ball over. Up one, two minutes to go in this game. Both teams have come back from adversity, so can't say one is short on heart. It's going to come down to execution here. You see on the replay, he just started to bring it up court after the last turnover. And bucket. All right, here comes the play. Bulldogs with the ball. Abeta. Holds on to it, kicks it into Merchant, who reverses with the left, and he's good. They take the lead. The Bulldogs back up with 144 left on this play clock and the game clock. Williams bringing it up slow. A beta still on him. Williams drives, kicks it out. Connolly kicks it out to Williams, to, to Lee. Back to CT. Colin Tarver's three misses, but Lee gets the rebound. The putback, no good. Out of bounds on San Mateo. Feather River gets the ball with a full shot clock. Look at this shot. And that rebound. And then another putback. And then 23 for the Bulldogs. Keon Nice comes in and tips it out of bounds. It's a one point game with 120 left. Fabian Cox in the paint. Cuts up. Can't get it. Put that good. The score changes again. Now 71 70 Golden Eagles. Timeout by San Mateo. What a, what a fascinating, exciting, thrilling day of basketball we brought you here on NorCal Sports TV. You see the putback doesn't go, but the second one does. And we'll be back after these messages. I'm Sonny Oaks. Growing up, I thought basketball was my best path. One shot to success. At San Jose City College, that all changed. My mentors saw more in me than I saw in myself and showed me that I could be anything. No one in my family had ever graduated from college but I knew I had an obligation for future generations. At San Jose City College, you can go anywhere you want to go and be anything you set out to be. Discover your brilliance at San Jose City College. To NorCal Sports TV, I'm your host, Sonny Oaks. This is the first day of the San Jose City College top-off. We have another barn burner for everyone watching and in attendance. With 105 left on the clock, the score is 71 to 70. The Feather River Golden Eagles have battled back from a double-digit deficit to take a double-digit lead. Just for the San Mateo Bulldogs to come back, and the score's changed three times in the last 30 seconds. Under a minute now on the clock. The Bulldogs searching, down by one. Malik Merchant driving, kicking out. Antonio Beta shows the three, goes in for a layup, doesn't get it. Fabian Cox for the Golden Eagles comes down with the ball. You're expecting a foul any moment from the Bulldogs. They don't get it. Colin Tarver running down the court with 38 seconds, goes up, doesn't get the foul call. Bulldogs with the possession have a chance to take the lead. 29 left on the game clock. Merchant kicks it out. Milch shoots the three, drains it. Two-point lead with 23.9 left on the game clock. Justin Milch coming up big for the San Mateo Bulldogs. There you see him left all alone. Somebody, whose man is that? As Amari Stoudemire used to say whenever he was getting torched. 
Wow, 23 seconds left on the clock. We already saw one double overtime game tonight. Is it possible we see a second? Will we make history? Will we be here till midnight? Will you still be watching by then? All questions you're going to have to stick around for 23 seconds to find out. You're watching NorCal Sports TV on the first day of three-day tournament here at San Jose City College, the annual season tip-off. Be sure to tune in tomorrow. Like us and follow. Subscribe. Find us on YouTube at NCS TV, NorCal Sports TV. It's very easy to find. Throw those likes up. Make sure you comment. Let us know what you love. Let us know what you really love. We're here for all your JUCO needs. And don't forget to follow Big Show Sonny O. That's me, the voice of SJCC. La Voz de San Pepe City. Let's go. All right, we have 23 seconds left on this clock. And both of these teams want it so bad. They both want the Wii season to start off with the dub. Nobody wants to start off in that L column. Williams bringing it up. 17 on the clock. Shot clock turned off. Still dribbling. Down by two. 10 on the clock. Williams goes up off the glass. Can't get it. Fabian Cox struggling for it. Malik Merchant comes up with the rebound. That's going to be the game, folks. He gets it. It's not the game. There's two left on the clock. They miss. They make it inbound. No good. 71-75 is your final. What a game, all. Feather River down by double digits. Fought back and owned the second half until the last six minutes where the Bulldogs just showed some grit. That full court press turned out to work for them in the end. They still had energy to finish this game off. Man, both teams got to feel good about what they were able to accomplish tonight. Unfortunately for Feather River, they couldn't hold on for the last couple minutes. That's going to be it. I'm Sonny Oaks. You're watching NorCal Sports TV. Tune in tomorrow for more JUCO action live from San Jose City College. Thank you, and have a good evening.